Welcome back to the ball, everybody. I'm your voluptuous host, the headbanger. Voluptuous because of my, my wonderful beer gut, my beer belly here. So welcome back. Great to see all of you. Um, gonna do it another one today, just strictly. I'll call it a notebook episode. Done this a couple times in the past, maybe one, once or twice a season. Um, my horror notebook, as I've ex explained before, which many of us have. We write, write down in here all the horror films we need to buy, and we methodically cross them off as, as we pick them up. So yeah, I got a really awesome, epic pack for you, stack here for you guys to show you. Um, it's, I mean, it's mostly DVD, but there are, there are some Blu-rays, and the Blu-rays that I did pick up are just amazing additions that I'm thrilled to finally have. Um, yeah, so I do this once or twice a year. I did one, I think, a few episodes back. You all seem to enjoy it. Um, this is stuff I picked up, you know, within the last several months. Um, and a few of these that I kind of forgot to show uh, last time we did this. But uh, it's a Saturday, early Saturday afternoon here. Beautiful summer day. Um, later on, I'm going to watch, uh, watch some flicks with uh, the better half. And uh, really excited. Feeling good. And uh, let's do this. I got beverage here. Really for you IPA beer lovers out there. This is uh, by Green Flash West Coast IPA. Um, really delicious. So, chars to all of you. Delicious. Uh, let's get to it. You know, I'll do this as quickly as possible, but you know how this works. Um, nothing else today, no other segments, strictly this. Um, I got such a huge stack, I'd say right close to, to 50 movies to show. Again, these aren't rarities, just standard A to Z catalog titles for the collection. So let's get to it. Uh, we'll start with the Blu-rays. Uh, we all know how great Shout Factory, Scream Factory has been doing with their releases over the last year or so. Um, I would love to get more than I have, and you guys know how it is. You gotta pick your spots. You can only get so much. I uh, had to get this one. I had to get an upgrade on this. Great 80 slasher, The Burning. Uh, 26 buddy who's been on the show. You guys know and hopefully love. Uh, he's I'm pretty sure he has every single release that uh, Screen Factor has been putting out, uh, which is just awesome. I wish I could do that, but um, needed this one for sure. Upgrade over that that lame MGM release with that horrible cover. I'm actually not big on this cover artwork to be honest with you guys. But it is cool that they allow you to, you know, you got the alternate artwork, the original artwork. Um, and really, I've shown this before, like on Instagram or something, but I love this. This is a hard box of the film. Oh, look at that artwork. It's probably my favorite artwork that I've ever seen uh, for this film. I would love to have that on here, but obviously, who knows? I don't know who did this artwork, but that's really cool. Anyway, I checked, uh, checked this transfer out last week, and uh, really awesome seeing this film. Such a beloved 80s slasher in high depth quality. Um, honestly, I mean, I, I've seen much better Blu-rays from some other 80s slashers, so it's not like one of the best I've ever seen, but still awesome, and uh, my wife and I really enjoyed it. Happy to have that one. This one I was thrilled to get right when they announced it. Love this film, Musk Craven's Deadly Blessing. Um, cool artwork. But I still like, I think I'll flip it, I still, my favorite artwork for this film is uh, the original poster art with, uh, you know, the girl like laying on the bed. Um, I think that's supposed to be Sharon Stone. But, uh, great film. I think, I consider it underrated, but I think underrated is a term that us horror fans are, is overused. Um, including myself, I think we all do it. But I mean, the fact is, I just think it's one of Wes Craven's best films. And a lot of you out there agree with me. Um, just such an original story, um, great performances, and, uh, the hot Sharon Stone looks super hot in that film. Great film with the shot with the spider and the, the bad top. I mean, just I just love this film, and I, I actually haven't checked out the Blu-ray yet, so excited to check this out. And uh, Mrs. Hedberg has actually never seen that film, so excited to show her that. A couple steel books, Blu-ray steel books. This one would definitely have to fit under the collectible side. Um, I didn't need this. Uh, I already had this film on Blu-ray, um, but you guys know I love this film. Alex De La Glacia. This was up for. Best Picture Golden Horn Awards a couple years ago. This is The Last Circus. Um, this goes by the title Mad Circus on this one. I believe this is a German steelbook release of it. Just gorgeous cover. Had to get it. So this is definitely the, the collectible side of me. Um, there's the back. With the unbelievable Carolina Bang, who won uh, the hottest Babe of the Year award that year. I call her a three second girl. Uh, what does that mean? Um, any intimate, if I were to, you know, be lucky enough to have an intimate encounter with her, I would no question last no more than three seconds. 
Um, she just, she's just that gorgeous. I'm sorry. I, I'd get, I'd really learn what the heck about your charm. No question about it. She would not be able to, to um, refuse that at all. She'd be sucked right in. But then, when things started to get a little pick up, get a little hot and heavy on that's when, and I would, the pressure would be on for me to perform um, three seconds at the most. Um, I'm sorry to get that personal. You guys know how it is. I, I, I don't keep anything between the, the two of us. So that's just she's a three second girl. Unbelievable, amazing film. I just love that cover. I don't like. I'm a little disappointed with the inside that there's no like artwork on the inside of it. So that was a real bummer. But overall, a cool steel book, and I got it for a very reasonable price. Another steel book. Believe it or not, I didn't even own this film, which is just ridiculous because it's definitely, I mean, an all-time classic. John Carpenter's The Thing. So of course, seen it a million times, but I just one of those ones I just never actually got around to picking up a copy. So I figured this was a perfect way to add it to the collection. Steelbook Blu-ray. Really cool artwork. Um, and this actually has cool artwork, unlike the last one on the inside. I like that picture there. You can see it. Um, really excited to watch this on Blu-ray. Um, if you guys have this one, let me know. It's not the nicest steelbook. It's kind of more on the flimsy side. It kind of, you can squeeze it and it bows a little bit. But got this for very cheap, under $15. So to get this on Blu-ray, steelbook is just amazing. Can't wait to check that out. Now this is a really cool set I was thrilled to get um, by Redemption. Um, it's one of those things that's funny. This is a director that probably many of you out there have already been fans of. I mean, a well-known guy within the genre. But it's one of those things you kind of throw up to the party late. I mean, I'd seen one of his films way back when, a long time ago. I enjoyed it. But just kind of, you know, I guess didn't enjoy it enough to say, okay, I got to go seek out the rest of his work. Um, and then it just kind of over time, you know, kind of gets buried under all the other things you're into. And uh, recently, several months ago, I watched, checked out one of his flicks on Netflix, which I think Netflix is cool for a situation like this. Um, saw it, was interested in it, put it on, actually loved it. And the director I'm talking about is British director Pete Walker. So I picked up the Redemption Pete Walker Collection Blu-ray. Um, this comes with House of Whipcord, Schizo, Die Screamer Ann, and The Comeback. And I didn't own any of those films. So awesome to get all these on Blu-ray. I've yet to watch these on Blu-ray, but the film that really got my interest was Schizo. Um, absolutely loved it. Uh, starred the lovely, sexy uh, Lynn Frederick. She would definitely be under the category as a three-second girl with me. Um, she was married to uh, Peter Sellers in real life. And kind of a tragic story with her, because I think her performance in Schizo is really what reeled me. And I thought she was fantastic in it. Sexy, but... You know, you got to be able to have the acting chops with me as well. It's not just how hot you are. you got to be able to act. And she was both. And uh, great story. Awesome ending. But anyway, yeah, in real life she was married to Peter Sellers. And when he died later in life, her her life and career really just plummeted down. She got into drug drug use. Really sad story. And she died pretty young, um, which is a shame because she was just very talented and sexy. And uh, that schizo film was really what reeled me in. I want to see other Pete Walker films. Frightmare was the one that I had seen many years earlier. But A House of Whipcord I've never seen. Um, the Comeback I've never seen, but Die Screaming Marianne, I've seen that film and I really enjoyed that one. Um, just good characters. These aren't like brilliant films by any means. They have plenty of faults, but they're just fun. Sometimes some uh, exaggerated characters and it, they're just, I really enjoy his films and can't wait to watch more. So thrilled to get that Blu-ray box out of Pete Walker films. And this set, just unbelievable. I've wanted this for, since I saw that it came out, uh, this came out in both Region 1 and Region 2, and uh, I actually got the Region 2 one because it's I still have yet to get my uh, Region Free Blu-ray player, which is definitely um, in the works to get this summer at last. Um, but this is the Region 2, but it's, it's Region Free, so um, this is the Universal Monsters Blu-ray box set. If you have this, either they're very similar, both ones, the Region 1 and Region 2, but it's just an amazing set. I got this at a really good price. Can, it was actually way cheaper than the uh, U.S. version, North American version. Um, see these films. I've been watching these slowly. Um, of course, a fan of all of them, of course. But uh, Little Headbanger had not seen any of these films, so we've been showing them to her. My wife, had. there's a couple that she had never seen before. And the transfers are fantastic. This package is, is amazing. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but if you don't have this set yet, it is an absolute must. I'm dropping stuff all over the floor here. Comes with a gorgeous booklet, really informative, great pictures, and they give you these uh, fantastic lobby postcards for each film, um, and they're just they're amazing. Highly recommended. Creature of Black Lagoon. Um, 
These are just gorgeous. Absolutely awesome set. And like I said, we've been, over the last couple of weeks, we've been watching these and showing them to Little Headbanger. So she uh, can know her classic roots in horror. Unbelievable set. It's just amazing. Great packaging. Highly recommended. You can get it for a very cool price on uh, Amazon UK. So thrilled to have that. That's it for the Blu-rays. Um, take a quick break. I gotta start drinking more and uh, we'll be back. I'll get started with the DVDs. I'll try to progress a little bit quicker. It's Saturday. Got the weekend off work. Hanging out with all of you. Chilling on a beautiful Saturday. Just showing you guys. Uh, additions to the collection. This is what it's all about, Charles. So good. So I got a little bit of everything here with the DVDs. I mean, we got some new stuff, some, um, of course, slashers, Asian films, uh, and some British stuff, uh, Italian, of course, uh, creature features, classic black and white, uh, some revenge films. So a little bit of everything. Let's get to it. Uh, brand new film, Would You Rather. Uh, stars Jeffrey Combs. Really cool cast. It's got, uh, if you're into the, the porn scene, Sasha Gray with another role in the genre. Um, it's got, I always forget his name, which bothers me, but if you're a fan of Trailer Park Boys, it has the lead Ricky in this. He's just fantastic. Cut to the chase. Great film. Uh, absolute blast. Watch it with friends. Um, they play the game, Would You Rather, at a dinner table, and uh, this is an absolute blast. It has a guy from uh, uh, My Name is Earl in it. Just good performances. For, con considering the subject matter, it's not as maybe as gory as you would think, but there's still some like brutal stuff in it, and it doesn't de um, detract at all from the film. Uh, cool ending. Predictable, of course, with something like this, but doesn't take anything away. Absolutely just an enjoyable experience. Jeffrey Combs is absolutely outstanding in the lead role. Highly recommended. Definitely one of the most uh, enjoyable films of 2013. I'm sure it'll be up for some awards. Brand new film by uh, Jan Casavetes, daughter, the daughter of uh, is it Nick Casavetes, probably maybe seen his, saying his name wrong. He was a director from, kind of a cult director from the 80s and 90s, maybe even the 70s. I'm not sure when he started. Yeah, his daughter's making this vampire film, Kiss of the Damned. I was actually really excited when I first heard about this. I, thought I enjoyed the trailer. Um, it looks very stylish and sexy. Uh, we'll see how it is. Hopefully it's better than Blood for Irina, which I just did not like at all. I'm um, excited. Probably going to watch this tonight. Uh, has one of the actresses in it is the actress from, who I think is Uber Hot Euro Babe, an EB. She was in Sheaton. She was also in uh, the crazy film Rubber from a couple of years ago. Excited to watch that tonight. We'll see how it is. I'll let you guys know. Uh, some random stuff. Doesn't really fall under certain criteria of some of the other ones. But uh, this is a small hard box that I picked up. Um, this is a film, Fade to Black, from the 80s. An absolutely amazing film. Um, Anchor Bay put this one out years back. And it's not out of print, so it's really hard to get. So I just had like a bootleg of it. It's available on VHS PS if you don't want to spend the money for regular edition. But... I just love that artwork. I thought this was a really cool addition by CMB Hardbox, a uh, small hardbox um, that I picked up for a good price. So just happy to have a somewhat legitimate release in the collection. Absolutely love it. Never seen this one. Just fucking buy it. I don't want to get into the plots too much of these films. It's going to take a while. If you've seen that, let me know. I just absolutely love it. Finally picked up Uncle Sam. How can you not enjoy this film by William Lustig? Uh, Blue Underground release. Been on the list. Some of these films... I show you've been in my notebook for literally years, like way in the beginning, the early pages. So I tried to get some of that stuff this time out with this batch of uh, additions. I love Blue Underground when they made the, the shiny cover like that. You guys know I love shiny things. Who doesn't? And uh, they did one for, what was it? The, uh, what did they do it for? The Bob Clark film. Anyway, I wish they did that with all these films. I just love that shiny. Shiny artwork there. So happy to have Uncle Sam finally. This is a film I've never yet to see. I haven't mean, opened it watch yet. It's called Night Watch. Um, Australian film from the 90s, I believe. Um, one of those ones I heard about. I thought it was seems to be really good. I've heard it's good. So you have to see that. If any of you guys have seen that, let me know. Gene Rowland's Grapes of Death. You guys know I'm a huge Gene Rowland fan. Um, it's so one of the last few that I needed in the collection. Um, love this film. Used to have a VHS of it. So, uh, yeah, happy to add the Synapse edition finally. Really, I don't know, I call it really creative zombie film, I think. And it's kind of like, I'm not going to say underrated, but I think it's overlooked. You don't really, even within the fans of his films, you don't hear this one talk about too much. And um, really cool. It comes with like a booklet too, which 
some of the other Synapse stuff doesn't come with. One called, uh, what year is this? Early 80s, 1982? Or, I don't know. That's when the DVD came out. I don't know when the film was shot. It looks kind of more like a 70s film. The Sender. Uh, again, heard some good things about this one. Um, yeah. Looking forward to check it out. Guy has dreams. Um, things in his dreams start coming to life. He can start controlling bad things that happen. One of those stuff. One of those type films. Uh, Leonard Malton says it's a solid thriller, so it's got to be good. The Sender. One of those ones I knew about for many years, of course. It's classic cover art. A name, a muck train, uh, but it's one of those ones just never bother watching, and this is one I watched on Netflix somewhat recently, and actually fucking loved it. Really spastic film. The plot's all over the place. It has plenty of uh, deficiencies and problems, but man, it is just so entertaining. Um, the gore is very inconsistent, but of course, all practical. A couple of effects are just laughable, and other some of the other effects are just downright like amazing, like Falchi esque. Part, part where a chick starts peeling her face off and it just, I just stood up and just clapped, which I tend to give, particularly when I watch films alone, I give a lot of standing ovations to scenes. But uh, yeah, it's got uh, got uh, both Fenson in it too. I'm a big fan of. A couple indie films. This film actually first saw screen at Cincinnati, in Cincinnati, Ohio at a Horror Hound several years ago. It's called Drive-In Horror Show. Really cool to see a screening of an indie film. I mean, to me that's like, horror at its most purest form. The director's there, sometimes the cast there. He gets up and introduces it. Um, so yeah, it was really cool seeing that in that, you know, that situation and environment. And I ended up really liking it. It's a series of short films, like a, a creep show type anthology. And uh, really entertaining, very low budget, but very well done. And it kind of, the in-between shots are shot at a, a drive-in, which is really cool. Highly recommended. Um, I was thrilled when I, because I wasn't able to purchase it at the con, it wasn't available. so. Thrilled to uh, finally pick this one up. Drive-In Horror Show. Check it out if you like anthologies and support uh, indie horror. Uh, Easter Bunny Kill Kill. Really cool, very low-budget slasher by uh, Chad Farron. Um, saw this years ago. I absolutely loved it. So happy to finally pick it up. Starts off one of those films. I was a little first 10, 15 minutes or so. Acting's really bad. I'm just like, I don't know about this. Stick it out. It ends up being really badass and dark and moody film. I love it. Easter Bunny Kill Kill. Uh... Absolutely love this one. Senseless. Uh, part thriller, part horror, part torture porn. I'm not a big fan of that genre, the, the subgenre. It's probably my least favorite horror subgenre would be torture porn, but um, it's, it has a lot to say. It's definitely social commentary. Uh, uh, American banker gets uh, kidnapped and basically gets tortured, and they, they, you know, they, they broadcast it right I want to see, and they accept donations to, to help save them. Uh, some pretty brutal scenes in here. But uh, it's got a lot to say, our, our fixation with violence and uh, definitely some political, some political commentary going on as well. Amazing film. I absolutely loved it. I don't really hear too, much, too many people talk about this film. Senseless if you like extreme films with a provocative message. Of course, got to get some Asian stuff. And I'm not I'm talking so much, I'm not enjoying my beer. One of those ones early in my notebook. Took way too long to pick up. Evil Dead Trap, classic Asian, extreme slash or whatever you want to call it. Uh, great gore, but it has like a real kind of a like stylish vibe to it. Um, almost, I know it's been compared sometimes to like almost Argento-esque at times. Awesome film, absolutely love it. Took way too long to get it in the collection. I almost feel bad about that. Um, of course, revenge films are big in, in Asian cinema. I got some amazing ones here. Saw this last year, The Devil, highly recommended, have to purchase it. Done in a very dramatic, intense way. Um, the performance by this lead act actress, I'm not going to try to say her name, is absolutely fantastic. Awesome horror, pure horror ending. Um, some really, like, really intense stuff, and you really feel for this character. Pulls you in. Absolutely love it. Highly recommended. That's a must. These are all musts. I mean, confessions. Unbelievable. Another revenge story, great ending. Um, a teacher's daughter is killed, and I'll just leave it at that. Um, fantastic by the great Third Window Films label. Highly recommended. This one, I don't, you know, I haven't heard anyone talk about this film. This one just absolutely loved it. Desire to Kill. Um, this one I forgot to show on my last update. Um, it says here, old boy, what, old boy in a hospital room. 
I guess you could say that this is absolutely unbelievable. Two guys end up in this hospital room, and uh, let's just say they have a history um, behind them, and just fantastic. Desire to Kill, highly recommended. I want to say for you Asian fans, but I hate saying that because it's like grouping it off. Like, you know, if you're in a horror at all, cinema at all, I don't have to say because it it's an Asian film. Just go out, just fucking buy it, pick it up. Great revenge flick. So on the revenge trip here, Blue Underground Night Train Murders, another one far too long to pick up. Um, really, uh, it's by Aldo Lotto, who I'm a fan of. Really, um, I would say I'd call it a realistic uh, revenge film, rape revenge film. Big fan of the rape revenge subgenre. Um, really disturbing, I would say definitely better than uh, Last House and a lot more serious tone of this film. Thrilled to finally have that addition. And another absolutely brilliant revenge film. Uh, it's a French film that I don't think gets talked about often within all this, the talk on the, the recent French new wave of horror. Seven Days. Absolutely loved it. Again, I would call this more of a realistic feel, tone of this film. Um, guy's daughter is uh, killed and he just goes, finds out who did it, and uh, the rest is history. But somewhat of a, somewhat of a, I don't call it a twist ending, but I don't like to get, give too much away on this, but um, kind of a, explores a different angle on the whole revenge thing. Uh, questions a different angle, but uh, absolutely fantastic. If you love French horror, you know, it's got that certain tone to it. And if you love revenge films, this is a must-have. Absolutely love it. Seven days. And, uh, all right, we're getting there. Take another quick break. We'll be back. And I'll pound these out.